Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and I have a brand new series for you on my channel. We're going to be doing the 12 weeks of Christmas. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the video here. So I did start by cutting down some Inka Dinka Doo masking paper. I really wanted to have color in the center of my card. And please excuse my head, you're gonna see it pop up a few times in this video. Apparently I wasn't sure where the camera was because my head is gonna get a little bit in the way, but hopefully you're okay with that. <clears throat> so I did cut down a piece of the masking paper and I just wanted the center portion to do my blend. So it's just gonna cover the outsides of my cardstock. And this is an A2 sized card. I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna have a black mat like I always do. And I have this white piece here, it's a Nina piece of solar white paper. And I have it cut down to an eighth of an inch smaller than my black mat. And my black mat is an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 card size base. So I did start with some oxide inks here. I have three colors. I'm going to use ripe persimmon into candied apple into fired brook brick, sorry, four colors, and I'm going to finish with black soot just to add a little bit of uh, drama around the outside. So I do go through and blend them until I like the blend. I go back and forth. Uh, there's no real way to get a perfect blend in my opinion. I think it's just honestly working it. Um, I've been asked a few times, people have said that they struggle a bit with blending and for me personally, I honestly just keep going back and forth. I find the more ink that you have on the paper and the more ink that you have on your blending tool tends to make it a little bit easier to get the color that you need down. As I have had some people mention that they like to uh, try to put a light wash of color down. And if you're going for a more subtle background, I personally would use uh, like a brush instead of a blending tool, um, like one of the blending brushes. I find that they are just to give me, a, me personally, a lighter look than uh, this darker look I'm going for here because I'm trying for a little bit more drama in my color. And you're going to see here in a minute, I'm going to make a mistake. And I promise you, I'm going to show you how I fixed it. Because uh, I didn't think about it when I did it, but it makes sense once you see what I did and then how I fixed it. Don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and make your own instead. But So here I was going to lift off the ink the masking paper, but I really wanted some water splashes in the background just to add a little more dimension. Well, the problem, of course, is that the uh, masking paper doesn't take water well. So you're going to see here when I lift up my masking paper, it's going to leave behind wet spots of the masking paper stuck to my cardstock. Now, this isn't a big deal. We're going to fix it. However, it did happen and I did have to fix it. Uh, so as you see, I'm lifting it up and there's pieces of red that are outside of where they're supposed to be from my little center cut uh, piece there, the colored piece. And there are stencils you can use for this. I don't own any of them, so I just used masking paper for the same effect. But we use what you have. I just, that's what I had. I don't own any of the masking paper or any of the stencils that have that. And now you can see I can just rub it off because it's only just leftover masking paper. Although there is a piece there that actually ripped my base cardstock. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of glue here in a minute and I'm going to lay it back down because it only lifted up a little bit. So and it's just that one piece. See here, sorry, my head's going to get in the way. I, just, I left this in because I really wanted to see you guys to see that you can fix things like this. Like there, It's not a game like ender in a card. Um, I, I try really hard not to start over unless I've done something that just cannot be fixed. But that's pretty rare, to be honest with you. So I did just glue that one piece down again and I kind of uh, rubbed off all the weird pieces that got stuck. So now I'm going to take some glitter cardstock. This is the Concord and Knight 9th Natural Glitters cardstock. And anything I use in all of my videos will be linked and listed down below. And I just have my little Gemini go. I have three snowflakes from Simon Says Stamp here that I'm going to use to make uh, the snowflakes for my card. And I end up making five of them. I have the Leah Snowflake, the Grace Snowflake, and the Mini Snowflake Mandala die. Now, these are stunning snowflakes. I love snowflakes. I don't know if you guys were here for my Christmas in July series, but I make a lot of snowflake cards just because I love them. And uh, if you don't know, I'm in Canada, so um, I, I actually love snow personally. I know some people don't really like it, but... It's one of the more beautiful things about winter in my opinion. But yeah, so I did just take my pokey tool to remove all of the excess little pieces in this uh, glitter cardstock. And you can see I used my Gemini Go. I love my Gemini Go. It's the only electronic die machine I have, but it sits on my decks constantly. So anytime I have small dies like these little snowflakes, I'll use it to cut them out instead of bringing out my big shot. 
So here I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. I did play around with the layout of the five snowflakes a couple of times until I found one that I really liked. And I'm just using some Gina K Connect glue to glue down my snowflakes. And I am gluing them flat. I kind of, if I had thought about it, I might have done some kind of um, sticky adhesive on the back when I cut these out but I didn't think about it so I'm gonna have to use some liquid glue and it does um, kind of spread out a little bit when I put them down but I use the reverse tweezers and just kind of clean it up a little so the 12 weeks of Christmas that is a series that I'm gonna do right now today's the first one um, and it will be every Monday from now until Christmas I will have a new Christmas card to share with you guys I kind of thought it would be a really fun series to uh, just do Christmas cards for a little while um, um, as you know or if you don't know Canada Thanksgiving is actually next week uh, because it's in October for Canadians and uh, and I also have just so you guys know I have a birthday hop coming up on the 8th of October that's my birthday um, and I'm doing a hop with the team tiny girls it's my last hop I've graduated out of team tiny now as I have more than a thousand subscribers and I will be doing a giveaway in that hop so if you guys want to check it out please do so I just used, I was going to use my Gina K glue here to glue this down. My Gina K glue wouldn't work. If you guys know anything about me, you know me and glue just, for whatever reason, glue doesn't like me that much and I always kind of have a fight with it. And sorry, there's my heart, my darn head again. I don't know what I was thinking in this video. Apparently I just couldn't get my head out of the way. So I did glue my panel down to my black mat and now I'm just going to take my scissors and just trim off the excess snowflakes. I did this on the black mat because I kind of wanted them to extend a little bit past the uh, panel that I had colored. Um, you don't have to do this. You could have trimmed them off once your white panel was down and in some ways maybe I should have done that because there's one part that looks a little bit odd because it wouldn't glue to the black mat. But I like how it turned out so I kind of just went with it. I kind of just it added a little more um, like dimension to my card. Like it uh, felt like the scene was going outside of the panel. So here I've taken my Misty and I'm just going to stamp a sentiment down and the sentiment is from the Tons Holiday Ornaments sentiments and I'm going to use some um, Joy Claire, no, what am I using? Sorry guys, I'm using some Versafine Claire Nocturne ink to stamp down my sentiment there and I'm just using it in my, my Misty so that I can line it up perfectly while I stamp it down. Just because after all the work I've done to this panel it would be horrible to mess it up just because I wanted to put a sentiment on the bottom there. And we're getting to the end here. I am going to glue this down now to my A2 sized card base and you can see here that I do have the black mat and the white card base. That's kind of my thing. I really like how the black mat makes uh, the cardstock pop, my, especially my colored cardstock. Uh, so I have a tendency to do a black mat on pretty much every card that I make. I'm sure at one point I'll stop doing that, but for now I still love it so much that I just I keep going back to it. But yeah, so I'm just going to use my glue and here you can see I'm still struggling. Like I just, me and glue, I don't know. Do you guys have this problem? Like I just find that I cannot get the glue to go on nicely most of the time. I kind of end up fighting with it a bit, but but that's just kind of how it goes for me, I suppose. <clears throat> but yeah, so this is the first card in this series. I hope you guys will check out the series. Every Monday, I'll have a new Christmas card to share with you until Christmas. So it will be 12 weeks of Christmas, 11 now after this first card. I'd love to have you back, so I'd love if you'd consider subscribing. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, and let me know what you think of this card. Um, I cannot wait until we do another video. Oh, please check without the birthday hop on October 8th and enter in my giveaway. I'll have all the information for that in that video. But yeah, I, uh, I cannot wait to see you guys again, and I hope you're having an amazing day. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.